All right, we're back for another edition of Wildcat Tracks Week in Review, week seven. Seven. Man, getting to the almost the end of the season. We only are a month away from winter sports, which is crazy. That, that's crazy. Well, a chill's in the air, so um, that's good. Cooling down. Yep. All right, busy week. So we start off the week uh, Monday and Tuesday. We had volleyball. Um, played Clark County on Monday here at home. JB's got a two zero win. Mm -hmm. um, played well. Um, I was at class, so you guys were you were working that one. Yeah, varsity stumbled a little in the opening set, and then came back and you know really had a great little uh, between sets. They have a late little team meeting, shifted a little things around, and then came back and swept. So it was great to see them after a stumble come back and get focused like that. Adversity is part of it. it so is. Um, they lost the first one 20 25, and then they won the next three 25 21, 25 17, 25 19. And then followed that up the next night on Tuesday. They played against Manassas Park. JV again 2 0. There's some consistency yeah. there. Yeah, JV's having one of their best seasons I've seen in a while. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And then Varsity won uh, 3 0, 25 9, 25 8, and 25 16. And then didn't have anything on Wednesday, a light night. We had a Northwest District meeting. Um, we'll just leave that as it is. <laughs> All right. And then Thursday. Um, so yesterday, JV football picking up a big W. Yes, their first W of the year. Uh, came out, uh, drove the ball down the field the whole first quarter. Drove the ball down the field. They scored. Then Meridian scored, and we thought, uh-oh, is this going to be a, right. you know, a 50-point 50, 50 game here? And then... Um, defense stiffened up, did not allow a single point for the rest of the game. Uh, Landon Shell had a great night. JT Sarchet, uh, both had really good nights in the backfield, scoring a couple of TDs. Yeah, happy those guys. 28-6. 28-6. 28-6, cool. And then volleyball, so I was there for the first half of football and then went over to volleyball. I walked in on the exciting third game for JV. So mm -hmm. they were tied in the third game and finished off. So they pulled out the victory there, two nice. to one. So congrats to JV. And then Varsity uh, talked with uh, Mr. Cup there after that game, and he said probably one of the best games they've ever had in that gym for a volleyball game. So um, we came up in the short end of the stick last night. So a yeah, robbery uh, game. Yeah, yeah, that'll lay the uh, foundation for when they come home and we fill that cap pack out. Um, shout out to all the guys who did go over to the game last night. Volleyball team appreciated that support. Yeah, the guys did a good job. They were, um, we always talk about being positive and supportive. Uh, keep it about us and not about the other teams. So they did a good job. Uh, spent about 45 minutes in Coach Detweiler's office this morning just rehashing the game, talking about um, the mental part of the game, which I think, you know, our girls are very talented uh, physically. And I think for all athletes and coaches, met the mental part of the game, you know, um, you know, you can train your, your craft, you can train your body, but how do you train your mind? So like, you know, like what are the messages that you're telling yourself in those key moments? And yeah. so like how you can master that, uh, you know, is the voice inside your head louder than the voice outside of your head? Yeah, so, I think it's about becoming that well-rounded athlete. You're not just in the weight room and not on the field. You're not just on the field, not in the weight room. You're not just, you know, uh, not training your mind through the classroom. You gotta, you gotta really focus on being the all-around athlete. And, yeah, uh, we want to keep pushing that here in all sports. Well, and mindfulness training is really about, you know, what are the messages that you tell yourself? And so, like in those key moments, what are you saying to yourself? So again, great things for them to work on. But I tell you, I have no doubt. Um, yeah, it's proud of the effort. They played well. Skyline played really well too. So um, you know, they'll respond again. Sometimes you learn a lot more from a loss than a victory. So True. this is another True. little 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 bump in the road. But um, they'll be back next week, and we'll talk about their schedule here in a minute. And that brings us to tonight's game at Meridian. Yep. yep. What do you think um, keys to that are? Um, Coach Sarchet says uh, his normal three keys, you know, controlling the line of scrimmage, winning the third downs, and really focusing defensively on us. You know, make sure our guys are playing their positions. Don't. Don't get caught up in with the quarterback or, you know, they run a, a double wing with, with um, what that motion's going on in the backfield. You focus on your keys and your job. And, um, you know, let's uh, finish this week off with a, another big football win. Yeah. 
I think, you know, I'm always looking for, when we talk about process around here, we're looking for just how do, do people progress? And so that's for the players, but that's all for, for, for coaches, you know, like how are they making adjustments and how does what they're doing in practice transfer to the game? So uh, that, um, that progression, that's what I'm looking for. I don't, again, I, I hate to use the scoreboard as the only defining factor for success or failure. So um, I expect good things tonight. Uh, I know they've had a pretty good week of practice from what I gather. And um, like you said, uh, I think when you got people running at you, they better be spelling and making it run east and west as opposed to downhill. So yeah. good luck tonight. I'll be up there in Falls Church traveling into the city. Mm. Oof, yeah. yeah. Anyway. It'll be nice to get back out of the city. <laughs> All right, tomorrow we've got an exciting little thing. We've got freshman volleyball going up to Kettle Run for an invitational. So that's a freshman volleyball only. So I uh, appreciate Paul Fry over at Kettle Run inviting us to that. So we hopped on that opportunity. And then we got Comp Cheer back in action up at Brentsville, uh, building off of last week's success, the big W last Saturday. Bringing home some hardware, a trophy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're calling me from the bus. I got some FaceTime action from the bus, and all the cheerleaders oh. were excited. I was got, I got scared for a second when they're calling me from the bus. And yeah, then, that's you know, not a good sign. <laughs> no, no, but uh, Miss Detweller played it up a little bit, had a little fun with me. But, uh, yeah, I was proud of those girls, and they're excited. They can't wait to compete. Brentsville is uh, – Usually, Brentsville Cheer is the class of 3A, so they're excited to go up against that JV squad and, and you know, see where they're at. Well, first, first year back in oh, yeah. with Comp Cheer, so they've been doing a great job. Credit goes out to the girls and to the coaches, all you guys. Again, a lot of adversity throughout the year, but on the mat itself, they've really been uh, doing a great job, so happy for them. And that takes us to this week, or coming up next week. So we don't have anything on Monday. We got parent teacher conferences from 12 to seven. So hopefully we have a lot of parents in here talking with their teachers. And then um, practice will either be before that or after that 12 to seven window. And then volleyball are back home versus Meridian. So um, that, and then Wednesday back off again, pretty light week. Mm -hmm. Thursday, comp cheer is over at Skyline. And then we are home in volleyball versus Brentsville. The bye week, uh, originally we had a game there, but we are off. Um, that's now our bye. And then Boys and Girls Cross Country is going to be up at Millbrook at the third battle, running there uh, 945 on Saturday. So that's next week's stuff. How about mailbag questions? Mailbag, back to history this week. We got a history question from uh, the, the local historian. If, if anyone knows Memphis Rice, we took Memphis Rice's uh, um, question this week and he asked about history what is the longest running sport in Warren County and we did a little dig we had to do a lot of digging for this one I don't uh, we got all the way back to 1923 1924 couldn't find any records before that so we're gonna we're gonna call it a tie baseball and football were both here at Warren County in 1923 1924 now the VHSL didn't come around until the 1970s so these weren't like not like we have today, district, region. They weren't, they were just local, you know, one season of local games. And uh, for the women's, most of the VHSL sports started in the 70s, but I found intramural women's basketball 1930s. Wow. You should have seen the outfits in this uh, yearbook I saw. They were, uh, they were something. So I got a question. If we had football in 1923, 24. Report to the main office immediately. Always love it when we have a little. Got the announcement. Okay. But anyway, back to it. I, so if we're playing football in 1923, was Rick Gardner the coach? <laughs> Rick Gardner was not in this part of the state. Um, oh, okay. So, he, so he, he may have been coaching somewhere, Rick. I don't know. We'll have to ask you that next week. But uh, <laughs> oh, man, just Rick. kidding. Rick's birthday's coming up. Happy birthday soon coming up to Mr. Gardner. Absolutely. Thanks, absolutely. All right. So Mailbag. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Mailbag questions. Keep them coming. We're getting some good ones. Warren County um, Athletics at gmail.com. Free pizza from Fox's Pizza if you get your uh, question drawn. Appreciate sure our good buddy Jeff over there at Fox's yes, Pizza. How about plans for the weekend? Um... I'm going to have to mow, unfortunately, Ooh. after all that rain. Uh, so we might have some time around the house, uh, but my um, daughter's been sick, so we're going to get her better and uh, probably watch some football and maybe get some sleep. 
So we've been busy. This was a busy week. It was, yeah. Sleep's always a good thing. Football's yep. always a good thing. Yep. How is about you? Isabel uh, is coming home for fall break. So Woo! she's actually en route right now. So wow. uh, planning for safe travel there. So she's coming home today. And then we're heading over to Frostburg. Will plays Notre Dame, which Notre Dame and Frostburg tied for the conference champion last year. Ah, okay. So we're going to have the whole family over there. Big game. A little cookout afterwards. And then, of course, more football. So, um, yeah, excited to have the whole family together. Um, my guess as always, like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. And don't forget, uh, we do the Wildcat tracks on Friday, but we also have Spirit of a Wildcat. Check those out where we interview a uh, student athlete. And we have on our Wednesday, usually a little short, same student athlete, some rapid fire fun questions that we uh, saw from YouTube shorts. So uh, make sure you check out those too. Like and subscribe. Yep. Appreciate all your guys' support. Again, uh, all your support is greatly appreciated. Our student athletes are doing a great job. Coaches are doing a great job. And it's nice to have that support out there. I appreciate you guys following along. We will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. weekend.